What's up guys, my name's Brandon and the iPhone 6s is the oldest device compatible with iOS 14 and just like I do every year, I want to take a look at how the software runs and share my experience with you guys after over a week of using the first beta here of iOS 14. And first off, I just want to commend Apple for still supporting a device released in 2015 here in 2020 with their latest iOS 14 software. That's just insane. You won't find that anywhere else on Android or any other operating system. It's just awesome. This is great value. You're getting great value out of this iPhone 6S if you bought it back in 2015 and you're still able to use it and still getting pretty much all the new features that the $1,000 iPhone 11 Pros are getting. So anyways, that's just crazy. But let's talk about some of the new features here in iOS 14. Now I'm sure that you guys know about most of the new features in iOS 14 if you watched my video, which if you have not, that will be linked up in the cards and down in the description below. I go over nearly 100 new features in iOS 14. But anyways, in this video, I want to discuss these features on the iPhone 6S specifically. So you guys may already know about the new features, but I want to talk about my experience with them on the iPhone 6S specifically and how they've been performing on this old 2015 device. So let's first talk about the home screen and the widgets here. So of course I do have my widgets right here. I made this smart stack right here with the battery and the calendar. I found that to be most useful for my iPhone 6S. And then I have a Siri suggested smart stack right here, which shows things throughout the day. So like the weather is normally what I keep it on right there, but it will change throughout the day based on you know machine learning and what Apple thinks I want to view at that certain time. And of course, to add a widget to the home screen, just tap and hold anywhere on the screen. It can be a blank space, it can be an icon, it could be anything. And then you get the plus up here in the top right hand corner, which is different from other devices because on like the iPhone 11, iPhone 10, all those devices, it's over on the left hand side. So it is a little bit different here on the 6S. And I don't personally like it up here in the top right because it is a little bit hard to press. As you can see there, it just went away. It seemed like I pressed plus, but it just went away for some reason. So this is the first beta, so you can expect things like that. And it happened again, as you can see. So it is a little bit annoying being up there in the top right, and it's a little bit hard to press that plus. You know, you have to be very, very precise with your touch right there. But then you eventually get to the widgets right here. We can add all these different widgets. You have the different sizes and everything you can add. So let's just go ahead and do music, for example. You can see you can change the sizes right here. Then just go ahead and add it to your home screen. And if you want to make a stack, where you can scroll through them. You can just go ahead and drag it right on top of the other. And then you can do just like this, kind of like a folder with applications. And it's cool because you can kind of create your own style of a home screen. I really like the customization that Apple is now giving us on the home screen. In my Discord server, I have people sharing like different layouts and everything for their home screen. And it's good to spawn new ideas for your home screen as well, which by the way, if you guys are not in the Discord server yet, that link is also down in the description below. But one thing I also wanted to talk about with the widgets is that they're actually draining battery a lot on the iPhone 6S. And I think it's especially the widget one right here that is draining battery for me on my 6S. Now I've not had this issue on any other device except for the iPhone 6S. So even if we go into our settings here and take a look at battery, we'll talk about battery in depth here in a minute, but you'll notice that the number one drainer of battery is home and lock screen. And I think that's due to the widgets because I don't really see any other reason anything else on the home screen will be draining battery. So just be aware of that with the iPhone 6S specifically on iOS 14, at least in this first beta, may not be the case later down the road, but it does seem to be draining battery. Now, if we scroll all the way over to the right, we will have the app library here, which is new in iOS 14 as well. This will show all of our applications and you can search for applications right here. It will show them in alphabetical order, which is pretty useful. This is also where we can find applications that may not necessarily be on our home screen. So if we go ahead and delete, let's just say feedback, if we remove app, Maybe we just want to remove it from the home screen, but still be able to access it from the app library. If we go ahead and tap on remove from home screen, now all of a sudden it's not gonna be on our home screen anywhere, but it will be over here. If we go ahead and search for feedback, as you can see, it's right there. Or of course we could have just scrolled down to the Fs and you would find it right there. So the app library is very useful and I do like having that there as well. Now also we do have a few minor tweaks to the control center as well. So if you do use like a home pod or anything to do with home kit, those will now show up here in the control center. And you can also toggle that off if you want. If we go into our settings here and then go to control center, you can see you can turn off the home controls if you want. I personally would suggest that on the 6S just because it's a small screen and you won't be able to see, you know, your toggles down here as easily. 
But if you have, you know, HomeKit devices and you really want to access them from the control center, you can do so. I personally on the 6S though would recommend turning that off. Now we also get picture in picture mode on the iPhone 6S as well for videos like YouTube videos, Netflix, and applications like that. However, of course with YouTube, as you guys probably know by now, you do have to use it through Safari. So in the native YouTube application, you cannot watch videos in picture in picture. You have to do it through the Safari application. So if we go into the YouTube app and just copy the link of one of these videos and go to copy link and then open it up in Safari. So if we're watching the video in Safari and we go to our full screen right here, you'll see a little icon that shows picture in picture up in the top left or you could just go straight to the home screen and it will show up automatically there. But there is a setting for that. If you go into your settings and you can see we still have the picture in picture video playing down there. But if you go to your settings and go to general, and then picture in picture, make sure that start automatically is on. That way you don't have to click that button. You could just go straight to the home screen once it's in full screen mode and you can go ahead and see the video on your home screen. It's pretty useful. Of course, on the iPhone 6S, it is a bit of a smaller screen. So it is a little bit more, you know, hard to see everything you're doing behind that picture in picture video. So a lot of times I'll just swipe it off the screen like that and then swipe it back on. That way I can still hear the video, but I'm not necessarily taking up so much room on my you know, screen to see what's going on in that video. But if something sounds interesting, I can just swipe it over and take a look at what's going on in that specific video. So picture in picture, pretty useful, but not as useful on the 6S as it is on other devices, just due to the smaller screen. Also new in iOS 14, you can now change the camera quality straight from the camera application. And you don't need to go into settings to change from like 1080p to 4K, for example. So you can see there it's in HD, but if we go ahead and tap on that, you can see it changes to 4K just like so. Tap it again, it goes back to HD. So that's pretty cool. There is a setting for this. Of course, this was you know default for the iPhone 11, but in iOS 14, it's turned off by default. So you'll have to go into your settings, go to camera and go to record video, and then video format control needs to be enabled to do that. So of course, this was an iPhone 11 exclusive last year, but now in iOS 14, it's for all devices. Also in the messages application, I love being able to pin conversations and we get the little bubble up there. It's really nice. You can pin up to nine at a time and you can of course drag them as well well. So if we just tap and hold on one, you can go ahead and drag it down or let's not do that. Let's just go ahead and drag it down here and you can see it will unpin that conversation, which is pretty nice. Now, speaking of messages and that keyboard, if we go ahead and switch to landscape mode, you'll notice that on the iPhone 6s and older devices, we have the emoji button and the numbers button now swapped which is something that was a big pet peeve of mine in iOS 13. I don't know if this really was a pet peeve to anybody else, but in iOS 13, the one, two, three, the numbers were closer to the space bar and harder to press than the emojis, which I used emojis more than numbers. So I don't know, that's just a small change I noticed here in iOS 14 that I do like. However, I will say that the keyboard is a little bit laggy here in iOS 14. And we do also have some lag, as you can see there, the keyboard is just slow when we go back and forth. You can see it just kind of you know, lags behind there when we go to the list view from a conversation view. So that's pretty annoying as well here in iOS 14. And then also in Safari, if we tap the two A's up here, we have the tracking report and this will show all of the websites that have trackers and you know what the trackers are and everything like that. Really nothing changed here in the iPhone 6S, really nothing different than any other device. So don't really have too much to share here, but it is nice that it shows all of the trackers from all the websites that you visit. And with iOS 14, you get pretty much every feature that the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the latest device from Apple gets. There's really not much at all that you're missing out on here being on an iPhone 6S, which once again, is just incredible being a device that was released in 2015. And you know, especially at such a cheap price point now that you can get them for, it's just really incredible that it's even running iOS 14 let alone running pretty well. I mean, especially for a first beta. Now let's talk about that performance a little bit here. So like I said, the performance is not great. It, you know, it's not gonna blow you away. It's not better than a stable version of iOS 13, but it's not nearly as bad as iOS 13 beta one was last year. So applications aren't crashing like they were last year. They don't really take forever to load up. So like if I go into Twitter, if I go into Instagram, you can see they're pretty responsive. Everything opens up pretty quickly here in iOS 14, which is actually pretty impressive for a first beta. So some of these, you know, do hang a little bit, but it's nothing too substantial, especially because I'm on low battery right now. I'm only at 16%. As you guys can see, once again, the battery life is not great at all here in iOS 14, which I'll talk about here in a moment. But performance, like I said, is not bad. Really my biggest complaint is, like I said, the keyboard, when we go back like that, you can see the keyboard lags a lot and really just apps hanging a little bit. They don't crash but the apps do hang just a little bit and performance overall 
is not the greatest, but for a first beta, it's really, really solid and definitely better than it was last year. And I should also mention that the storage bug is also a pretty major problem here in the first beta of iOS 14. So if we go into our settings and then go to general and iPhone storage, you will see that iOS 14 beta one has a storage bug where you can see there my system and my other are taking up a ton of storage and there's really no explanation for this. So if you go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see 6.18 gigabytes is being used by system. Whereas before that was like two gigabytes or three gigabytes. So a lot of data is being used and we don't know why. And it's not just on the iPhone success, it's on all devices, but it's especially annoying when you have a 16 gigabyte device because it will take up a ton of storage. So if you have an iPhone success, and you have not installed this yet, I would definitely recommend waiting if you have a 16 gigabyte device, which I'll talk more about that here in a moment as well. But also you can search in iPhone storage. That's also new here in iOS 14. So yeah, performance is not bad and it should be pretty good by public beta one or public beta two. So now let's talk about that battery life because battery life is my biggest complaint on the iPhone success here on iOS 14 because it's just simply not good at all. Like I mentioned, the widgets do drain battery a good bit, especially if you have something like the weather that's pulling in data, you know, or anything that relies on a internet connection. And then also just simple standby. So like when I lock the device and just keep it there for a while, the battery drains a good bit, a lot more than it did in iOS 13. So standby and just being on the home screen drain battery. So you really can't win with battery life here in iOS 14 beta one on the iPhone success. Now do keep in mind that I don't have the best battery on this iPhone success. I'm at 88% which I would assume is probably around what you guys probably have. I wouldn't imagine most people have like 95% battery health. I would imagine most are between 80 and 90%. So I'd say that this is about normal. So this is about what you guys can expect to get on your iPhone 6s as well. So just know that you're not going to get great battery life from this. It is better than iOS 13 beta, but of course the stable version, the last public release of iOS 13, you know, 13.6, 13.5.1, you're going to get much better battery life on those versions as of the time of recording this with iOS 14 beta one. But once again, keep in mind, just like the performance, the battery life will get better. So it probably will be better by public beta one or public beta two. And I will be revisiting the iPhone 6s when that time comes and letting you guys know in that video. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss that. Anyways, if you guys are interested in seeing videos on iOS 14 on the SE or the iPhone seven, or just later videos on the 6s, you know, in further betas down the road, Definitely make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. But anyways, guys, that was iOS 14 on the iPhone 6S. Hope you enjoyed and thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.